Thank you very much. My name is Dan Toscano, attorney at law. I represent uh, the owners of 3-5 Quincy Court. Um, <coughs> the president is passing the, the information package to you, which is on the floor plan to you. Uh, the owners is in the audience. Uh, another one, and we have our architect, Dr. Cho. I apologize for my back, but I have some words. It's always tough following both rules. It's so calm, stand there. I move around a lot, unfortunately. Uh, so we're going to have to talk about agendas as we, uh, we move forward. And I'm always supposed to go in front of those rules, okay? <laughs> now, so, as I said, I represent the, the owners of 3 to 5 Quincy Court. 3 to 5 Quincy Court, just to give you an idea, with those of you who may not have heard of it or know where exactly where it is. It's right next to Ricardo's restaurant. So if you're facing Ricardo's restaurant, it's to the left of it, and Lemoncello's Lemoncello restaurant is to your back. So there's a little courtyard, I think just two properties there, on three, there's uh, 189 or 180, yeah, 189 North Street, and then there's three and five North Quincy Court. Two buildings. Uh, there are right now two buildings that have been purchased by this, this group, and what we want to do is confirm the occupancy is to six family dwelling. Right now, they're both three-story residential buildings. There's three apartments in each of the buildings, and we just have to <coughs> one building to make six residential units. The, the property has been vacant and abandoned for many, many years, and I'll show you some photos of how the condition of this property is today. And this is the condition of the property that has been like this for many years. It's rat infested, and I'll pass this along so you can see it. There's evidence of squatters in there. Uh, certainly causes, I'll have to tell you, it's certainly an eyesore to the neighborhood, eyesore to the residents. And it's been like that for many years. What we want to do is just purchase the property. What we want to do is beautify the property at uh, confirming that six family residential units. We want to put some additional living space into the basement and we want to go up one story to, uh, to approximately 47 feet in height. Right now the existing building is approximately 37 feet in height. We want to add one story to 47 uh, feet in total. So remaining under the um, 55 foot uh, height limit that which is in the North End community. To give you an idea of where we were and where we are today, when first brought plans to the community and met with the abutters and, and met with the DLT. We met probably a, a half a dozen meetings or so, and we may have been more with the abutters in regards to this proposal. The original proposal was always the six family residential units, but there was a number of bedrooms. I think in total there was probably 16 bedrooms we had. So if you're looking at the property, the two to the building, the first floor would be a duplex. So first floor, the original proposal was a duplex on the first floor. That would have, that was a three bedroom, three bad residential unit. The second floor had a two bed two bedroom units on each floor, and then the uh, third floor and the new addition fourth floor was also a three bedroom, three bad residential unit, and also had roof deck, a common roof deck for for the apartments, uh, I mean, the, for, for the residents of the, um, for the building. After meeting with some of the apartments, and we've met with them, and we've spent thousands and thousands of dollars with revising the plans, amending the plan, uh, we brought it down to 10 beds. So what you can see is, on the first floor, we're still going to go down into the basement, but the first floor units, two uh, duplexes, and going to the, the basement area, it's going to be a two bedroom. Uh, two bedroom unit, and we eliminated a half bath. So actually, yeah, we eliminated a half bath. So the first and unit number one and unit number two is going to be two bedrooms, two and a half baths. The half bath being on the first floor, the bedroom being on the this the lower level, but each with a full bath in it. The second floor, which was originally proposed for two bedroom, we eliminated one bedroom and the bath. So it's really it's a one bedroom now and a full bath. The, the top floors, which is unit three, uh, five and six, which is the duplexes, uh, we eliminated a bedroom on each of the units, and we eliminated uh, one full bath. So now there are two bedrooms and one and a half bath. Uh, a couple of concerns that we heard, and I, I think one we uh, pass around the full plan first, and I'll show you. Yeah. 
comfort siding on the, the top, that's there's no windows for that? Right. If is you that look, the fourth floor? Yes, this is the fourth floor proposal. The original, so this, this is the front of the building. So this is the front of the building, so three and five Quincy Court. There's no windows. You won't see any windows there. And the reason being, after working with the abutters, um, the, the, the abutters on the, the office side of North Street had concerns that the windows were too close to their unit, and in particular to a kid's bedroom. Um, that is an existing addition that was uh, put on that existing that, that building, existing building. So what we did, so the concern was, it was a public safety concern that the kids' windows were on the bed and there was a door there. So we eliminated the windows so there wouldn't be any, you know, take away the privacy concerns and also the public safety. We set it back approximately two and a half feet. And also what we did is we eliminated any roof access to any of the residents. So there's no roof deck. We took away the roof deck, took away the roof access. What you see here, there's a concern because of the condensers that will be on the roof. We have uh, made, put all the condensers are going to be lined up in the center of the building, and this is a sound barrier, uh, three foot, three foot, about a three foot uh, uh, that around it, so eliminate the, the, uh, the sound, kind of curtail the sound as much as possible. So one of the, one of those bedrooms doesn't have a window at all because it has a skylight? There, there will be skylights, but there will be windows on the side of, this is the side of the building, this is the side of the dog park, as you see, so there will be windows up there, so there's, and then there's windows in the back of them. Back of them. So there's plenty of light, plenty, plenty of window space, so the proposal is not to have um, any windows, and that's based on the concerns of the, the abutters. The, also, the other concern was, in, was the height. Um, there was one story that was about 11 feet. We did what we could. We, we dropped it down. The original proposal to, was to 48 feet in height. We brought it down to about, um, we brought it down to, to 47, so one foot. So, so, I mean, some of the concerns, uh, uh, really the concerns that we see all the time when we have new residential units. I mean, we, we got to understand this property has been abandoned for many years. It, it's a it's a it's a problem. It's a safety hazard. I mean, we've seen a property down. I think still in place. It's been abandoned for well over a year. There's a fire in it, and it, and it could have been a lot worse. Um, what this building is going to beautify that area, going to beautify that that alleyway, beautify the north end. It's not going to have any negative effects on it, and it's going to be safe. It's going to be fully sprinkled. It's going to be uh, you know a, a top rated uh, a building. Um, We've also put together um, a memorandum of understanding uh, pursuant to what the abutters had won. Uh, however, the, um, it's, unfortunately, that's not going to be signed because, you know, the abutters were, were concerned about signing it. So it, but it, we put it together, and it would just talk about the issues that we talked about, trash that's going to happen. We understand that with new units, there is going to be no trash. I mean. It just can't avoid it. I mean, and each lease is going to pertain to trash regulations, the city regulation, as when tenants could be, be put out trash. Also, the the, uh, the owners have made a commitment that they will put uh, invisible inside the building the, the city of Boston trash policy. Avoid a public trash. You can't avoid it. There's going to be there's going to be new trash there. Um, we limit the number of bedrooms to limit the, the number of uh, the number of people that are living in the building. To, the concern was that it was going to be a lot of feedback in that building, so that's why we took away some of the bedrooms um, in that unit. I mean, the parking issue is another violation. It's a common violation that you usually see in the neighborhood. And, it, you know, it's just one of those things in the neighborhood that you just, you have some property, you just don't have prop parking. It's the off-street parking violation, but it's close enough to Hay Market, to Aquarium Station. I mean, people come to the neighborhood and they, you know, they use public transportation or they move here in the neighborhood where they can walk, you know, access everywhere they need to go by, by foot. I think the allowance of the, each, the allowance of the, the additional living space in the basement and the, the addition will allow for a better tenant along, I guess, a long tenancy here and, you know, a more expensive tenant. I mean, because what we try to avoid here is what we see, you know, we all hear about, we don't want, we don't want students here. We don't want young, young, young kids partying. I mean, you have almost about 40, um, 450 square feet per, per floor. I think if 
not allowed to go down or go up. What you're going to have is six residential units at 450 square feet, and you can tell the type of tenant you're going to get, probably a student in there, maybe two students sharing a room. Whereas you open it up, you make it larger. Unit one and unit two are going to be approximately a thousand square feet. You know, unit two is not only can do; it's going to remain the same, be the same square footage at about 450 some square feet. But unit five and six are going to be well over a thousand square feet, which really calls for a possible is big enough for a possible young family in there, because this is what we want to attract more families in the neighborhood and really a more of a high quality of, of tenant. Um, we also. We also conducted a shadow study. Uh, it was a request by the neighbors of the shadow study, so we conducted it. So I think Dr. Chu is the only one who could probably understand it. But what I can tell you is this: we went over the shadow study with the with the architect, with the abutters at one of the meetings, and I'm not going to begin to explain it, but I'll, well, I'll tell you that there's minimal effect of shadow of, of this uh, of this proposed addition. Um, more than happy to answer any other questions, uh, but I know we, have, we do have abutters here. I know uh, pressed on time, we have a full agenda. I know the abutters, we've worked with them. Um, unfortunately, they're still opposed to the project after we've done, we've met all the demands, but but I'm sure they'll still be able to speak in the Oh, absolutely. I want to make a statement. One of the issues for a fire in the one place where still is placed, uh, we would have loved for somebody to buy the building and fix it up. Uh, the reality of the fact is when we buy property in the North End, we are married to the property that's around us. And somebody wants to buy it, turn it down, put a garden in. Uh, that place is dangerous. Uh, the way it is, it's dangerous to all of us. Not just to the abutters, not to the people living across the alley, not to the people living across the street. Uh, you saw the pictures, the graffiti inside the, uh, the apartments. Uh, uh, you know, the building next door to my house was empty for 20 years. Uh, somebody went in, they left a match to it. Uh, the people on number two, still in place, are still homeless, will be homeless for at least eight months. We've been out of the house for a month and a half already. Uh, you know, we, it is a congested neighborhood. You know, we got windows across the way, we got alleys, we have, we hear what the people across the way are saying. You know, I mean, I leave behind Phil, and Phil leaves behind me, and I'm sure when I feel my kids, it hears me. Uh, but the reality of the fact is, I might rather have a neighbor than an empty building. You know, and an empty building again, uh, tight borders as they are here, is dangerous for all of us. And it's just the reality. I mean, and, and, and you don't want to be in the position in which you get up uh, one morning, or you're, you're, you're spending your day in your building, and all of a sudden, the flames from the building next door are coming into your house. So, you know, uh, I believe folks have been trying very hard to. Uh, Things that are better, and it is a piece of property that has been unattended and needs attention. Hopefully, we can do the attention it needs. You know, if I recall, the, so the biggest the point of attention were the windows. They've been eliminated on that side. They've been eliminated. One of the biggest issues was the, the windows been eliminated, it's been set back. Right. Um, but it's the whole issue. It, it yeah. is the whole issue. So I'm saying here to say now that we've got rid of the windows now. I mean, they are opposed to the you know, yeah. so yeah. they are opposed to the addition. Yeah. I think everybody understands that this building is going to be occupied. Yeah. So this no three bedrooms? No, we eliminated the three bedrooms. And the bathrooms, there was concern with the bathrooms because we left some of the full bathrooms in there so the residents of the abutters were concerned that well you have a full bath at some point you're going to go in there and make a bedroom so they eliminated the bathrooms a lot of the bathrooms in, in the apartments yeah do they not sign the memorandum because they didn't agree to the terms or they still want to i believe that you know and once again they can speak for themselves but i believe it was just that they're going to be opposed to the project so why we're not opposed to the project we're opposed to the top four, four the addition, project. well stay within the yeah. zoning laws and you can clean up and they, and it is within the zone. I, I've been there for time. Is there any other questions for the And just to answer your, your, your question, uh, mm -hmm. Ryan, well, there's in that memorandum of understanding, uh, we still plan on meeting the request. I mean, the trash, uh, you know, um, pest, you know, construction schedules, you know, doing pest control and prior to construction after, you know, so we still plan on meeting all the demands that they have requested. And since we, we you know, we were informed that they were opposed to it, we could have went back and changed the plans to the original plans. But, you know, they want to be good neighbors and 
we've, we've kept the plans that were changed. What's your name, sir? Frank Schiller, yeah. We're not opposed to the project. We're opposed to going up another floor, changing the rules, changing the zoning laws, the parking. They can go in and they can clean up this rat-infested thing. I've been through that for a bit. This magnifies a lot of stuff that wasn't even there. There were tenants living there up until maybe two years ago, okay? So it has, it's not that, like John said over there, that, uh, you know, it's nice to go, yeah, it's nice to have a clean building. It's nice that they bought it. If they didn't buy it, somebody else would. So without adding the top floor, they can go ahead and stay within the law and do what they have to do. And nobody will be opposed to it. Uh, living in Hennessy, 187. Um, first of all, I wanted to just start by saying thank you and thank you to the developers. They've definitely worked with us. I'm the parent of two children on the top floor, one that will be five at the end of June and one that's not two yet. Um, one of my major concerns was the top floor having the windows, which they have worked with us, just because I wish I could walk you guys to that property and give you a field trip to the location. The proximity of the two buildings is very, very close. As a matter of fact, one of our neighbors measured from their balcony, we're not talking about windows, we're talking about balcony access to the roof across the way. It's about a foot, a little bit more than a foot, less than two feet. We have no problems with them occupying the building, and I say that based on the comment that you made. I know the danger of it because there were squatters hanging out on the roof looking to my children's bedroom, checking them out and looking. Steve, the developer, was kind enough to go that very day that we had the meeting when I expressed that concern and locked the building. And I said thank you for that. That being said, my concern as far as the windows, yes, they've worked with us. The proximity of the addition to our apartment is too close for comfort. You are speaking of not window to window, you're speaking to, from roof to my balcony that has a door adjacent to my children's bedroom. I'm not comfortable with that. I have no problem with them refurbishing the building. I want that. Nobody wants to have an empty building in their neighborhood, and you certainly don't want people doing graffiti and littering and having rats and roaches. I don't even want that in my building, and I'm scared that when they start doing that, they are going to be crawling towards our place. But that's never been the issue as far as them refurbishing and, and actually renovating the whole entire building. The issue all along has been the additional floor. It is too close to our building, and we're not talking about windows, we're talking about full access balconies that have doors. That's, but I want to say thank you to Dan and the developers. They have been working with us as much as they possibly can. My concern, though, is on my children. I, don't, I know that they've invested a lot of money. I get it. I understand. But the security of my kids right, is my top concern in this situation. Thank you. Sure. Mr. President, if I just add, then that's why we've taken away the windows. There's no access to the roof. It's set back. Um, we live in the North End. I mean, my bedroom is connected, fire escape is connected to the person next door to me. The fire escape. And they, they're out there drinking all night long. Uh, buildings are closed. We know that. We live in the neighborhood. We've had buildings closed. We've seen this issue. So, I mean, it's the North End. Uh, no disrespect to, to Sean. He is a board member. He recused himself. I would oppose him saying anything to this board tonight. He, he didn't have to recuse himself. He volunteered to. I think it's. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he did. I was called. I <laughs> with all due respect. I don't think you're a good guy. But the, but the bylaws actually allowed me to sit on the board. Uh, but I, 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 because it's the right thing to do, or, or accuse myself. So having said that, uh, the other right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, my name is Sean Hennessy. Uh, I live in 187. Um, to build on what, what Vivian was saying, this also to us is, is a density issue. I and mean, the FAR in the North End is three. These guys are at, at three, eight, four. You know, and why should they be allowed to exceed the limit? The, the limits are there for a reason. Um, and they're asking for habitation in two places where there was none previously. They're asking for habitation in the basement. And they're asking to go up the floor. And, and I understand that you know, the investors have said that the numbers have to work, we need that fourth floor to make the investment work. I, I, I get that, but they can't balance the books on the backs of the abutters. 
they can't balance the investment on, on our backs. And, and if they go up a floor and they go down a floor and add these two levels of habitation where there was none, that's a, that's a, that's a density issue. And there's also the precedent issue. If you say yes to this uh, proposal, the abutter uh, can also go up. And you'll have carte blanche to go up a floor, two, or, or three, and then we have another density issue. We'll, we'll be right back here in, in a few years or whenever he decides to go up. If he decides to go up, he'll have, the, he'll have essentially the permission slip to do so if you say yes to this proposal. FAR is there for a reason. Um, and uh, those, are the, those are the big points that I want to make. So the FAR, the FAR is, 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 as Sean has mentioned, is probably you know, 2A, and once this addition is approved, will be a roughly 3A, as you know, in the neighborhood. Most of the properties in the neighborhood are probably already above uh, 3A. Uh, well, the, 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 the adjacent building with the yeah. nine stories, that was not that size when they sold in, in, in 1984 for okay. 70000 dollars It did not have the top floor, and the top floor is there today. The existing building. I mean, it's just, uh, that, that did not, it was the same situation, and I'm sure there were other neighbors who uh, voiced the same, uh, the same uh, opinion. If I just what I'm saying, Listen, these guys are good guys. It's hard not to like them. I mean, they're, they're really friendly. They work with us. But the fact is, they bought the building knowing what the zoning laws were. They bought the building knowing that uh, they weren't allowed to go up, but they bought it anyway, banking on, on getting a variance. And the fact is, the FAR is 3 3 um, in the neighborhood, and they want to go to 3 and 4. And they're, they're, they're add, adding two floors of habitation when there was not. They knew the rules. They knew what this building called for. But they bought the building with the same rules. Because they did the same thing. Their, the laws were not any different 30 years ago. What I'm trying to tell you is that the building next door with the Italian shop is downstairs. That's an additional stop that wasn't there. I mean, it, it, it's the same. The issue is too is that we have this this come up on the neighborhood throughout the neighborhood. You know, there is a cap of 55 feet. All right. Somebody buys a piece of property. I mean, we all have that. I would love to buy a piece of property next door to my house. The lady doesn't want to sell it. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and I'm in a valley. If I can put an additional floor, I like to put an additional floor. And most people here would too. Yeah. Susan Barbier in Montgomery. Um, this, for those of you who don't know, so it, I took a oh 187. I'm in the park. I took a couple of pictures that just put myself on this morning. But if you want to see what it looks like, some of you have already been there. But I like the pictures. So. I have a question though. Did you get a difference when you guys bought I the had building? A, I, when sorry. you bought your property. When you bought your, when you bought your unit, did it look any different? That's what I'm asking, because the building did pop up out of the ground yesterday. I just don't understand how is it there's such a conflict in a so crowded neighborhood where there's a piece of property that's already there, that it's already... Yeah, that's fine. Fine. Go ahead. Um, I think that, you know, and I will take a minute to say yes, they could met with us and worked with us. And what I'm, what I'm here to speak to you about is the impact of the changes in the Okay, exactly what you're wondering about. It's exactly what I'm going to talk to you about. If you think that it's appropriate for them to add two floors of living space to this building that were never there, on top of the fact that the building has been essentially empty, I've been around for more than two decades. In fact, if you count our time near the neighborhood, living on the water, I've been around for three decades. And I understand the difference, and I know what was there. And we're talking about a big change, not just for the butter, for the neighborhood. And so I made it short, okay, of what I wanted to say. But I want to say this if you're talking about letting them put in two floors and making this change, then yes, there are a lot of appreciation for what they thought about, really. And have they made that better than the first one? Yes, they've made that better than the first one. Is the MOU everything we wanted? No. It wasn't signed because for a number of reasons, we're all individuals and it wasn't signed for different reasons. But it doesn't have everything we wanted. What I'm here to talk about is two things. One, the impact on the neighborhood. And then the impact on the bus. Right? And on the sustainability of the neighborhood, you know, um, you said actions speak louder than words, and we all know, and it was a great thing. So we don't have that here, right? And we know how the neighborhood's changing, we know how much it means to have someone who we can rely on to do the right thing. But we also know that doesn't always happen. And this, we know that this place has been empty, essentially, for 20 years, and yes, we want it occupied, and that would be better, but we don't want it done in a way that actually makes it more risky. Adding two floors 
and adding these bedrooms. If you take the 10 bedrooms that are labeled bedrooms in the drawing, and that's 20 people, up to 20 people, so you go from 0 to 20, or if you want to count two years ago, 2 to 20. There's also a couple of rooms that if you're a student, you're going to look at, and you might add more that way too, but they're called the women. The concern, I said that with students, so that's one of the concerns. One of the, the biggest concerns is that this is not going to be an owner-occupied building. You're right, they put a floor on our building. Our building's owner-occupied. This is not going to be, this is going to be rental, and it's going to be a remote manager, right? So down this little alley that you're looking at, dead-end alley, so narrow at one point that it's single file, they're going to be all these people who haven't been there before. What's the impact on the neighborhood? One of the things is fire safety. They can get, they cannot get street access for ladders down there. So now you're going to have people, if there's a fire in that building, the people in the building have one way out, getting down out of the building and out that alley. They can't go the other way. The fence is higher than, I don't even know how high it is. You can't climb over it. Any firemen coming down or coming down single file down that alley. And they're going to have to have a long enough ladder now to get to a fourth floor when there wasn't a fourth floor there before. That's a change. That's not what was there when we bought Trash, where does it go? We already have a problem with trash cans in the alley where they're not supposed to be. If you take out the basement to make it living space, where is all that going to go? In the drawings, there's no place for that, right? There's no plan for it. We know what's going to happen. We're going to end up with barrels in the alley, more barrels than we have already. We already have a problem with that. Parking, overnight parking. There's no per unit limit. There's nothing that says we only get one more street parking permit. You can, every single person in that building can get a North End parking permit. And how about you know what we have now already? With if you want to unload your groceries and load your load your laundry to go somewhere, you have double parking. So we have that many more people all the way down an alley to unload their groceries, get them down the alley and out of the car. And we don't have an owner who's contributing any parking space at all, but adding this. What about the impact on the particular butters? Because yes, there's some concerns that we have. The biggest concern is that this is not an owner-occupied building. And we've already lived with them owning the building. We don't have a lot of experience to go on, but all the experience we have is that they're not cracked. We had a lot of storm this winter. We had a lot of snow this winter. We have a long alley that the city doesn't shovel. That was shoveled by us, some of us. We also have some tenants in our building, some owners who rent. They don't help shovel. And they didn't help shovel at all either. So, I mean, we don't have a lot of actions to go by, but that's not, that's not a great example. We have no place where to share the sport. We have no other place for the trash. We have no other place for bicycles. We don't know what they're going to do about whether they are going to, in fact, be a great neighbor and move the snow or not remove the door. All right, we're going to have to catch I think that the, the, the purpose yeah, of these zoning so restrictions is to control the neighborhood. We have to move on. Jeff, you're on. How many people per unit? Will be occupying the building. How many people per unit? We anticipate the restriction is to cause the city has a restriction of no more than four non family members. But given the fact that we have the second floor, which is unit three and four, or only one bedroom, um, you know, could we hope to get a, a young professional or a couple in there? Um, it's a one bedroom, 450,000 square foot unit. The, the upstairs, uh, unit one and two, and unit three and four, it's a bedroom unit. Uh, I mean, the max it is going to city regulation as it is four unrelated individuals. Like the total that we calculated is probably about 22. I mean, if you, if you max out every person, you know, 22. Um, and, and, and she's right. She's absolutely right about the, the concerns. Your trash, parking, um, you know, people walking. Whether there's an addition or not, it's going to be occupied. I mean, I'm certainly, I don't. I don't believe you're saying you'd rather see it vacant because I don't think anyone would rather. Say no, I know that's why I, I said I believe you're not saying that because I don't think you would. But when we talk about trash issues, and my question to you is, what was it prior to that? 
occupancy anymore. The prior occupancy uh, been vacant for 20 years. No, so what was the ability of the building? But the ability of the building, uh, I don't know what the layout was. I mean, so six it, was, units. it was six units and two bedrooms per unit. I mean, I think it depends on what time in history. Right. I, I, I don't know. History, but I mean, seven kids were in one bedroom. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean like, yeah. like the neighborhood was yeah. years ago. To the express issues, I mean, how, how is it going to, there are two exits? For, for this, there's exits on the back of the building and the front of the building. However, I won't point out, so front of the building, of course, has exits, and the back of the building has doors, but it, it goes to the alleyway where it's a dog park. I mean, really, the only way out is you know, climbing over the fence, but it does have the access. It also has bridge. Yeah, and, yeah. There are bridge. Um, I have fire escapes and I believe. Right. On the rear of the floors. And then we talk about the, the fire safety. I mean, this building is going to be safer. It's going to be fully sprinkled. I mean, it's got to be a, a safer building. I was, you know, if the fire is, you know, people coming down the alley, whether there's the addition or not, it's going to be occupied. I mean, I could, I could certainly she is above the trash. Where are these tenants going to throw their trash? Well, just like everybody else in the neighborhood, we keep our trash in the location in our apartment, oh. and we put it on. Rather than have an additional basement, why does it need a trash room? Yeah, but, but and, and I understand in that in a trash room has come up to a number of meetings. Is a trash room really something that, that works? I mean, who, you're telling somebody who lives on the third floor, you think they're really going to take the trash down into the basement and leave it? And who's taking it out? And now you talk about rodents? Wow. I mean, it, it, just, it just doesn't work. I mean, you know, you born and raised here in the neighborhood. I born and raised here. The trash stays in the kitchen until I take it out in the morning. <laughs> you know, that's what it stays. That's right, because you see, you know, that we have three days to pick up. Now we right. have two. You know, we yeah. have trash. Yeah. That's yeah. why it's going to be a park. You know, it's an issue with parking. They took our parking underneath the expressway, and then they make it a park. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I Who hasn't yeah. spoken? Yeah. We'll get to listen to one more person. Anybody? Who oh, hasn't spoken? Oh, I, I would like to say What's your name? Where do you live? I'm Donna Sheree, and I live at 118. Um, I just think that it's wonderful that if somebody is finally going to fix the building. The thing is, is they don't need, need that fourth floor. They can take the basement, the first floor, and make their one unit. They can take the second floor and the third floor and make that other unit. They don't need that fourth floor. If they need it for financial purposes, that's not our problem. It's a big problem. And I think that the ratio that the FAA, yeah, the FAA are, is there for a reason. It's there for a reason. And to go up 30% above what it is is asking a little bit too much. Too much. It may have happened in the past, but this is much more heavily density. More people living here now. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. But so we have to pay more attention. And I mean, who's Frank Frank is here. Let us finish this. We all have to pay She's not in charge. All right. Let's move on. But I'm trying to say is, years ago, there weren't as many people here. There wasn't a density. Issue. Now there's tons of people, these buildings have all been rehabbed into small condos with a lot of people. These regulations have been put in place for a reason. And I'd like Thank to you. see them so, on the side. Make close. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it's getting, you know, in, in the architect. We know we have that. We used to have two bedrooms per, per mm -hmm. unit um, yeah. at each of the buildings. But by going up, you know, and I, we understand that property costs a lot of money. This building has been vacant and abandoned. It's been an eyesore to the neighborhood and the abutters for many, many years. By allowing them the extra living space into the basement and into the top floor, I mean, we know we're going to have a possibility of damage for young family. We're going to get a better long-term tenant, more, you know, quality tenant. They put a ton of money into this property. It's going to be high-end rentals. Um, and that's what we're going for. We don't want to go for the one-bedroom students in there where it just causes a mess and really not what the neighbor is. Yeah, the question. There's no way you can do with this condos? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they, that's been discussed. I mean, that has nothing to do with me. I mean, but 
right now, but probably not at this time. I mean, they 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 operate over six, seven hundred units in the city of Boston. I believe it's that number. In the city of Boston, they're well experienced uh, managing property. So, so with that said, we ask for your support. I'm sorry. I, I, I well, for, go. I, I think we've gone to the drawing board. We've met with the abutters many, many times. Um, I, I, we've been more than reasonable, and, and we've worked. They've been professional, respectful. It's been great to work with them. This is a plan. We've come down from 16 bedrooms and a number of bathrooms to 10 bedrooms, which is less than what was originally there years ago from what the so architect. Without the fourth floor, how many bedrooms? Without the fourth floor, I mean, now you're talking about 450 square feet on, you know, floors number three. Uh, two and well, one would still be 900 to a thousand square foot unit, so you're, you're making much smaller so residences. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So just yeah, but I don't, well, I don't think that's the point. The point of the fact is, you know, we, we, you know, we're coming into dialogue about, excuse me, we're coming into dialogue about, about our differences on, on, on projects, okay? We have our differences. We've had a great option to uh, a great amount of time to go through those differences. Those folks, like Frank, like me, like Jeff, like most of the people who are here, invest in the, in like you guys who bought your condominiums. You didn't buy them to lose, you know? Bought their property to make some money. And they're, they're, they're gonna fix it. Nobody else, that property's been there for years. Nobody else paid attention to it. These folks did. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna improve it. Hopefully they're gonna be good landlords. Hope we gotta give them some goodwill. We can't just come here and say because I don't like it. It doesn't fly. Guys, we're gonna make somebody make a motion. We're gonna vote. We're gonna make a motion. We're gonna vote. Go one more comment. Good. Can I just add? No, it's about the distance. They didn't specify that during the actual review. I know that back in the day. So the distance no, no, the distance is for the potential additional floor for the group. It was going back and forth. My question to you is, is it still going to be two and a half feet? What's the distance? We set it back two and a half feet. Okay. I just wanted I to make sure you didn't mention that earlier. I, I, I apologize. Yeah. I don't yeah. Did you? Okay. Okay. Thanks. We're going to vote. Thank you. 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 Thank you.